Hop in the car with your family and drive through Nightlights at Michigan International Speedway. They are open every day and they're open in the weekday from 5.30 to 9 and then on the weekend 5.30 to 10. If you'd like to ride the Nightlights Express train, which I highly recommend, you can buy t tickets by visiting nightlightsshow.com. Our show today is also brought to you by the Center for Family Health, and they have some insurance options that you may not know that you qualify for. Just give one of their enrollment specialists a call. At 748-5500, the Center for Family Health has been opening the door to health care for all for more than 30 years. Joining us now is the Public Information Officer for the City of Jackson, Aaron Demick. Good morning. Hi, Good, Good morning, sir. I can hear Santa's sleigh bells. They're coming. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's... <laughs> First, I, I, I think I ask you this every year, and I may have already asked you this this year, but what do you want for Christmas? Oh, uh, oh geez. not to put That's you on the spot, question. but hmm. mm. uh, some nice clothes. Yeah. You yeah. know, got to keep up the appearance. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You're, you're the face of, face of the city. Some so. nice clothes, <laughs> maybe some records. I like collecting vinyl, so yeah. some of that. There you go. Nice. Mm. I like your retro Christmas decor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My husband is fully responsible for all of it and he does an amazing job. I just kind of offer moral support and, you know, <laughs> uh, like a lot of husbands do, you know. Um, so yeah, he does, he does a great job and we're always happy to do it. We have a lot going on with the city. Uh, quick recap of what happened last night at City oh, yeah. Council. Mm. Yeah, so there was a special meeting last night and the main topic was about what the city can do about homelessness. Yeah. And this is something that's been going on um, for the past couple months as far as discussions, homeless is always an issue, um, but uh, this has just been a really big topic of discussion over the past couple months. So uh, the council was more inclined to try to make uh, some decisions um, after lots of discussions and also being mindful that the holidays are coming mm -hmm. and we're getting towards the end of the year and winter is happening. So uh, they ended up making some decisions and that includes buying 10 pallet homes. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think about tiny homes, uh, but I don't really know if you would necessarily call these tiny homes. They're more um, like a one room unit uh, for an individual to live in. Um, so 10 of those. And then also directing city staff to work out a solution with Jackson Public Schools to lease the TA Wilson property. Uh, that's a closed school. It's been closed since 2019. It was the former Jackson Alternative High School, and that's at Morrell and Blackstone. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was one thing. And then the council also uh, decided to work with a local organization called Residents in Action to uh, help work with people who are unhoused and uh, support the various services that goes with that. Yeah. Um, a lot more on that issue, <coughs> especially as it gets colder mm -hmm. and uh, get deep into winter. Yeah, I would say that was just the first step, but uh, it seemed to me as if the council and the mayor, uh, after lots of discussions, uh, wanted to finally take some action yeah. um, and start making some decisions. So, um, you know, the council makes decisions, and then it's up to us as city staff to make them happen. So that will be happening in the next several weeks and months. The uh, firefighters were busy yesterday morning and yesterday evening, but yes. uh, in the morning, they, uh, you guys had a great, uh, great opportunity to give away some coats. Yes, this was uh, fully the work of firefighters from the city of Jackson and Summit Township, uh, their union, uh, they have a union together, and the firefighters did a fundraiser to buy coats for local kids. So uh, yesterday they went to Hunt Elementary School in Jackson and distributed some coats to kids. And my understanding is they work with the school districts and ask uh, which children could benefit from having a new coat. And then they uh, distribute the coats. And then uh, folks from the Exchange Club of Jackson provided some hats and gloves that you see there uh, to go along with that. Um, so kids get hats, gloves, and coats as we get ready for winter. And um, they were at Hunt, and uh, they also went to Townsend Elementary School in the Vandercook Lake School District. Another so, uh, wonderful reason to live here in Jackson. Yeah, it's definitely. Very cool. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think the firefighters um, want to show the community that they do more than putting out fires yes. and responding to emergency calls. Uh, they do a lot for the community, and uh, this is just one of the many wonderful things that they do when they're not knocking down fires and going to emergency calls. I like all the fire the firefighters. Uh, Casual gear there, man. That's, that's nice stuff. When you have a whole lifestyle, you gotta have lots of gear. That's right.
They should open a merch store. They should. Oh, you yeah. know, actually, we when we travel to North Carolina, there yeah. is a fire department that has a merch store. Yeah, that's so great. Something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Duck, duck North duck Carolina. Duck North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got uh, coats. People are ready for winter. Is the city? I would say we are getting ready for winter, and just like anyone else, we are watching the latest weather reports yeah, and deciding weekend, right? what we can do. And what I've been saying is the snow is good for Santa and it's good for Christmas cheer, but it's not exactly great for the roads and traveling. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we've really just been looking at the latest weather reports and trying to decide how we can best react and how we can communicate to our residents. So things that we're telling people right now is when the snow starts flying, it's really helpful for our Department of Public Works crews who are out clearing the roads. It's really helpful if you remove your vehicle from streets. And if you don't have a driveway to go, you can use the parking garage at Consumers Energy off MLK. We've cleared it with them, so if you need a place to get your car out of the snow, get it off the street, you can go there. It'll be no problem. You can keep it there for the duration of the snow event. Um, the other thing to know is we're gonna have crews working nearly around the clock working anywhere from a 10 to 15 hour shift clearing roads. Mm -hmm. And at any time we'll have up to 10 plow salt trucks out clearing the roads as well. Oh, wow. And the other thing is it's really important for our residents to know that it's vital for us to clear the major roads, the state trunk lines and the emergency snow routes first. We need to make, we need to make sure that those are in proper working order in case there's an emergency. Those have the biggest traffic volumes. Mm -hmm. And then I think a lot of times residents get frustrated that the neighborhood streets, it yeah. takes sometimes a couple of days, but that's just because there are streets that are more important. I'm sorry yeah. to say, yeah. <laughs> there are streets <laughs> right. that we rely, uh, that people, emergency right. services rely on, uh, you know, suppliers use it to move goods. Uh, those are the important streets and we will get to you eventually. It could take a matter of days. Um, so it's just important for people to understand that you can actually go to our website and see a map of all the priorities so you can maybe get a sense of when we're coming to clear your street. Potential for some power losses and things like that. So just uh, encourage people to follow the city's Facebook page and website. Yeah, and if the situation gets very severe, we have an ordinance called a city snow emergency ordinance. So that is a declaration that comes from city administration. Mm -hmm. It's only for the city of Jackson, of course. And what that means is you are required to remove parked vehicles from streets. So our road crews have enough space to clear the roads. Mm -hmm. And that also means that you could get towed at your own mm -hmm. expense <laughs> if you do Brandon. not comply with the order. Of course, we do uh, try to identify right. who the car belongs to, knock on the door, try to uh, solve the, the situation before totally uh, towing a car. But we're not there yet. We haven't seen any flakes fly, but that yeah. is a situation we could be getting ourselves in. And real quick, we ha you have some breaking news about a roundabout. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just uh, getting the word out about that. Um, people probably noticed that we have art in our roundabouts here in Jackson. Yeah. And uh, we have a fairly new roundabout at MLK Drive and Morrell Street. Mm -hmm. And so uh, various people in the city have been working on a committee to try to get art for that. So mm -hmm. we have released four proposed sculptures and people can look at it on our website and give feedback through our website about which one is their favorite. And we're also having an event on Wednesday, January 4th at the MLK Center at six and it goes to 7.30 and that's a time for residents to go and uh, see the designs up close, give input and talk to the committee, mem committee members about what they think should go there. Awesome. Yep. Stay tuned, we'll have more on that on our website and here on JTV. Great to see you, Merry Christmas. To, Thank you, uh, same to you. Thanks, sir. To you and your family and thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thanks. From the city of Jackson, Aaron Demick, The Morning Show wraps up after this.